like to make a sandwich, but I'm out of bread. There's some in the fridge. You shouldn't keep your bread in the refrigerator. On Earth, we'd say thank you. <laughs> it was no surprise that the Big Bang Theory became a fan favorite and record-breaking hit among television sitcoms. Get ready to have your mind blown with the unbelievable rules that the cast of The Big Bang Theory had to follow. Woman, you are playing with forces beyond your ken. Yeah, well, your ken can kiss my Barbie. From strict wardrobe guidelines to no food on set, these rules will leave you in awe. But hey, it's all part of what made the show so iconic, right? So sit back, relax, and let's uncover the secrets behind the scenes of one of the most beloved sitcoms of all time. Number 26. Actors had to accept being written out. After only a few episodes, Emily and Leslie both left the show voluntarily. The circumstances surrounding Laura Spencer's decision to exclude Emily from the group continue to be a mystery. On the other hand, the writers themselves freely stated that they had a difficult time coming up with content that was compelling for Leslie Winkle, who was played by Sarah Gilbert. As a direct result of this, Leslie's character was eventually removed from the show. Emily's departure could have been justified by a similar line of reasoning. Actors are expected to accept these alterations in storyline as a standard practice in the industry. Not only does the show continue, but so do their careers. Number 25. Actors had to commit or be written out. There were a few instances where actors themselves decided to step away from the show. In such cases, their characters weren't patiently waiting for their return in the odd episode. Instead, they were simply written out of the storyline altogether. A prime example is Kate Micucci. She portrayed Lucy, Raj's girlfriend. Initially deemed as the ideal match for Raj, Lucy surprisingly ended the relationship and made sporadic appearances afterward. The reason behind this twist? It was Kate's decision to lead her own show, Garfunkel and Oates. Despite the show having only one season, Lucy's character wasn't reintroduced to Raj's storyline thereafter. Number 24. No food on camera. A significant number of the episodes of The Big Bang Theory had scenes in which the characters were shown eating together at a table. James Corden, who plays the main character on the show, was himself involved in the production of the show. He stated that there was simply nothing specific in the sitcom that he was a part of. In spite of this, their behavior was unavoidable when it came to a show like Star Wars. As is the case with a great number of comedies, the actors on The Big Bang Theory frequently feigned to consume their food to the audience. For the sake of continuity, it is preferable that actors do not actually consume food. Due to the fact that people have been eating, it is difficult to distinguish between shots when the quantity of food is fluctuating. Not only that, but because they shoot each scene multiple times, there is a lot of food for the performers to consume. For this reason, when actors do consume food, they frequently make use of a spit bucket. No matter how many takes are necessary to polish a scene, this typical procedure ensures that the actors do not become overly full of themselves. When it comes to delivering lines, it also helps them better manage their timing, which is useful. During longer scenes, the performers reportedly skillfully replicated eating by gently sliding the food about on the plate. This was done despite the fact that the scenes were prolonged. In spite of this, there were times when it was impossible to prevent eating of food. It was the only thing that prevented him from being consumed. The instances in which humor was employed were particularly prone to this phenomenon. It was stated by James Corden that the performers themselves were too long to even consider the possibility of having food on a plate. If the food isn't good for you, try some vegan cuisine instead. Meet up with each other at every location. Increased by delivering lines while mouths are full with food during the performance. In order to maintain a sense of realism during these occasions, the celebrities actually consumed part of the food. Number 23. The cast had to learn science jargon. Given Mayim's history as a real scientist, she never had any difficulties in doing her roles. The other actors in the cast, on the other hand, found themselves in a different circumstance. Because they did not have any kind of proper knowledge of the subject matter, they were required to put the scientific jargon to memory. 
Jim Parsons admitted that he was completely ignorant about the meaning of many of the scientific phrases, despite the fact that he was very good at delivering Sheldon's wise speech. He exerted a great deal of effort during the performance to guarantee that his words sounded genuine and natural. His presence on The Late Late Show with James Corden was the setting for an interesting incident that took place. Even though Parsons was having trouble writing down a scientific formula, he made a witty reference to something that looked like a square root. This struggle was something that everyone, with the exception of Maim, went through together. Number 22. Actors had to learn how to navigate the set. Because of its enormous size, the set of the Big Bang Theory was like a maze. Due to the fact that they were not on site and had to construct the set inside of a studio, the actor disclosed that there was in fact only one flight of stairs across the entire set. For this reason, it was necessary for the performers to perform multiple runs back down to the ground level during each scene in order to give the impression that they were rising to the fourth story. In order to ensure that they were in the appropriate location when the cameras began rolling, it was necessary for the actors to be familiar with their surroundings. Although it seemed as though the acts were taking place in separate locations, everything was actually positioned in a way that was easy for the actors. Over the course of a few moments, they made their way from Leonard's residence to Howard's merely by walking. On the other hand, being proficient in this navigation was a little bit of a difficulty. It was necessary for the actors to commit the architecture of the set to memory. Number 21. Actors had to perform in front of a live audience. Due to the fact that they despise being forced to laugh, many people have a negative attitude towards multicam sitcoms. Having said that, it is important to point out that the funny moments in these shows are the result of genuine audience reactions that occur during the recording of episodes. Chuck Lore Productions and Warner Brothers Television were responsible for carrying out the production of the show, which was shot in front of a live audience. During the first season, it was met with a variety of reactions from critics, but the second and third seasons had a more positive reception altogether. Continuing in the tradition of previous sitcoms that feature many cameras, it's called the Imbang Theory. In front of a live studio audience, a series of sitcoms that featured several cameras were performed. The spectators in the grandstand were present for each and every scene. The need that a character must perform in front of a live audience was always present, regardless of whether the character was a series regular or a guest appearance. Another inescapable aspect of being a cast member on The Big Bang Theory. Number 20. The original plot remains a secret. Despite the fact that The Big Bang Theory eventually became a comedy powerhouse, it is easy to forget that it was on the verge of being cancelled from the very beginning of its run. The pilot episode that was never shown bore very little similarity to the final product, if you can believe it. In this early version, Lenny and Sheldon continued to be the primary characters. However, their personalities took a new turn, and there was no sign of either Howard or Raj. There was a streetwise young lady named Katie who played the role of the main female character instead of Penny. Unfortunately, Katie did not strike a chord with the audience that was being tested. In their opinion, she was cruel and unlikable. Chuck Lorre, the creator of the character, made the decision to give her a makeover in reaction to the criticism and she was transformed into Penny, the more lovable neighbor that we now know. In spite of the fact that we associate her with Penny each and every time we see her. The embarrassment that was linked with the pilot that almost led to the cancellation of the program was something that Lori was unable to shake, despite the fact that everything eventually fell into place. In spite of the fact that there are fragments of the pilot that are circulating around online, Laurie strongly asked the cast to be silent about it since he did not want the episode to be associated with the series. Because the actors remained silent for such a long period of time, a significant number of diehard fans of The Big Bang Theory were utterly unaware of the pilot episode that was never broadcast for years. Number 19. Actors had to agree on contract terms. Despite the fact that Simon and Kunal earned the same amount as the top three, 
There was a time when the possibility of them being eliminated from the program was a significant one. This predicament came up as a result of the two individuals engaging in negotiations with the studio so that they could achieve bigger earnings by utilizing their attorneys. During a particular point in time, scripts were drafted without the participation of Raj and Howard in order to get ready for the possibility that the discussions would fail. As a result of this method, the two actors came to an agreement on a set of terms. The pay equity that they had been seeking was eventually achieved. It served as a reminder that actors need to find a balance in valuing their relevance without putting their job security at risk by overestimating the terms of their contractual obligations. Number 18. On the show's posters, Melissa and Mayim always had to be at the back. The first billing was given to the top three cast members, and Simon and Kunal were recognized as having earned the second place. Mayim and Melissa were left as the third billed cast members after they were removed. These two names will be located toward the end of all promotional materials and show credits that you might possibly find. Taking into consideration that they were not initially intended to be the main characters, this is a logical assumption to make. Similar hierarchies were represented in the promotional content and posters that were distributed. It was always the case that Howard and Bernadette were positioned in the back of the group. Leonard, Penny and Sheldon took the front and center position, as was to be expected, while Raj and Howard followed in their footsteps. To the sixth season of the show, even the posters for the play did not include Bernadette and Penny in any way. Despite the fact that this shifted as their positions progressed, they continued to keep a presence in the back of promotional materials. Number 17. No ad living. As a result of the cast's contagious banter, excellent delivery, and unforgettable zingers, you could get the impression that many of the show's best one-liners were delivered on the spot. On the other hand, despite the fact that it is expected of actors to adhere to the script, there were certain spontaneous moments that were simply too entertaining to ignore. Whether it was Bernadette's squeaky voice, Amy's unexpected spanking scene, or Amy's over-the-top response to her tiara, all of these jewels were created by the actors on the spur of the moment at the time. As an illustration, consider the game-changing improvisation that Kevin Sussman performed. When Stuart, the presumably unremarkable bit part, unexpectedly blurted, I love you to Penny, he was playing the role of Stuart. You have my love, you have my affection, Penny. It was so well received by the crowd that Stuart's persona underwent a transformation. Due to the fact that he got increasingly worried and pitiful, he was eventually given a regular slot on the show. It's a comfort that the actors didn't precisely follow to their lines word for word, especially considering how successful these spontaneous moments were with the audience. Number 16. DC Comic Superheroes Only as people who devote their entire lives to being geeks, it should come as no surprise that Howard, Raj, Sheldon, and Leonard were completely enthralled by criminals who wore spandex. Whenever they weren't lounging around in their apartment, this eccentric group of four could frequently be found visiting the comic book store in their neighborhood. They not only participated in never-ending discussions on who should be considered the best superhero, but they also enthusiastically embraced the opportunity to dress up as well-known figures whenever a costume party was held. It's time to reveal the twist. Sheldon was such a huge fan of Spider-Man and the Hulk that he even obtained a cameo appearance from Stan Lee, who was one of the co-creators of Marvel characters on the podcast. All of the members of the gang made sure to dress in DC Comics superhero costumes. Isn't that strange? Warner Brothers is the owner of the properties that include DC Comics and the Big Bang Theory. On numerous occasions, they wore outfits based on DC Comics because of this reason. Marvel books continue to be noticeably absent from the shelves of the store, while comics featuring less well-known vigilantes, such as Hellboy, are the ones that are receiving the most attention. So, what exactly is going on here? Where can I find Iron Man? And what is the reason that nobody is wearing the Wolverine look? Politics is the root of the problem. The Big Bang Theory and DC Comics are both products that belong to the Warner Brothers family 
as you may already be aware. In light of the fact that Marvel is DC's opponent, the inclusion of Marvel characters on the show would practically mean that Warner Brothers would be supporting the works of their primary competitors. Additionally, in order to incorporate costumes from the House of Ideas into the series, Warner Brothers would have to shell out a substantial quantity of money if they were up for the challenge. Number 15. The cast had to acknowledge the audience after filming an episode. Not only is the live audience present during the filming of a multi-camera comedy, but they are also politely recognized by the actors at the close of each episode. If you have ever glimpsed behind the scenes of a multi-camera sitcom, you would have noticed this. There is a curtain call that takes place after the filming has been completed, during which the actors come forward to acknowledge the audience. Despite appearances, this was a lot more entertaining than it appeared to be. It was customary for the actors of The Big Bang Theory to leave the show by dancing enthusiastically to a song that was peppy. The fact that this ritual was repeated in each and every episode may appear to be a little bit ludicrous, but there is no denying that it provided a delightful element to the overall experience of the audience. Number 14. Maim Bialik assisted as a consultant. Given the remarkable achievements that Maim made, it is possible to establish a strong argument that she should have been considered for higher compensation. In the same position as Johnny Galecki, she stood. One and only two individuals, Johnny Galecki and Jim Parsons, have been recognized with nominations for the Primetime Emmy Award. Maim utilized her real-life experience by providing advisory services to the show's science specialist, in addition to receiving this distinction. Because of her credentials, she stands out as the genuine article. Even though the science experts on the Big Bang Theory have a great level of experience, Mayim's expert understanding in neuroscience was recognized from the beginning of the first season. In the field that she worked in, she was an essential contributor to the provision of significant scientific support. Number 13. Without the top three, the Big Bang Theory would have ended. In television shows such as That 70s Show and The Walking Dead, important characters left the show while the shows themselves continued. All of the characters on The Big Bang Theory were never exposed to the prospect of this scenario occurring. Within the context of the show's continuity, the top three were absolutely necessary. Sheldon, Leonard, and Penny are the three main characters of The Big Bang Theory and the show simply would not exist without them. As the concert got closer and closer to its climax, this became more and more obvious. One of the primary reasons for its cancellation was that Jim Parsons decided not to come back for a 13th season. The continuation of the show would have been possible if he had consented to provide it another season. These three actors were the most important to the basic functionality of Big Bang Theory. And it was this relationship that ultimately resulted in the show's cancellation. Number 12. The cast had to dress according to character. Every single character, with the exception of Penny, was required to adhere to a predetermined outfit. Consequently, the actors had a restricted variety of options available to them in terms of their costume choices. If you watch all of the episodes at once, you will notice that they have been wearing the same clothes for the past 12 years. In contrast to this lack of change, Raj was an exception. During the 11th season, his character underwent a makeover that resulted in a more fashionable demeanor. Because of the character's strong connection to their fashion preferences, there were strict regulations that were enforced, and there was no opportunity for differentiation. The show even featured Penny adhering to this rule. Dresses that were more girlish were the majority of the items in her closet back then. Number 11. The cast had to partake in the sciences. We have all at some point in our lives fantasized about the excitement of traveling through space, and the cast of The Big Bang Theory certainly relished those times when the script transported them there. During the first three episodes of the sixth season of Howard, Simon finds himself in the midst of outer space. Each and every member of the cast was involved in a number of scientific scenarios. Each member of the cast was involved in a number of scientific scenarios. 
These included experimental settings as well as ones that contained a certain amount of practical danger. The show's scientific focus became less prominent as it progressed toward its conclusion. Nonetheless, it continued to be an essential component of its making. Every time the plot demanded it, the players had to be prepared to put on their boots and embark on yet another scientific journey regardless of the circumstances. Number 10. All the guys on the show had to be clean-shaven before each season. You probably already know that several of these actors sported full beards if you have ever seen them in public outside of the show. Between the seasons in their personal lives, they went to an entirely new degree of untidy appearance. They frequently resembled homeless men who were hunting for work quite frequently. When the show came back on the air, however, they had a face as smooth as a baby. One might easily understand the reasoning behind this grooming method. Some characters, such as Leonard, who were depicted as being weak, were unable to project an image that was excessively masculine. When it came to the remaining guys, the same idea applied also. If facial hair played a significant role in the story, then there were exceptions made. Number 9. Actors weren't allowed to openly discuss their love life. When Leonard and Penny were a relationship on the program, it happened to coincide with the real-world romance that was going on between Kaylee and Johnny, the actors who played them. This is an odd example of how life imitates art. Interestingly, Kaylee and Johnny went their own ways off-screen at the same time as Leonard and Penny went their separate ways on screen. Eyebrows were raised in response to this odd alignment. A breakup on the program would not likely result in a breakup in real life because it was highly improbable that the actors' genuine sentiments were so intertwined with their roles. Considering that the other members of the cast did not have any romantic relationships, it appears that prudence was the most important factor. Up to the point that the show came to an end, Johnny and Kaylee's connection was kept well hidden. Number 8. Actors were also expected to promote the show. When a person earns a cool million dollars for each episode, promotional appearances on other shows are typically a lot more enjoyable. With the purpose of promoting the Big Bang Theory, it was anticipated that actors would also make promotional appearances on other series. There was a continuous presence of the performers on a variety of programs, and the purpose of their appearances was always to promote the Big Bang Theory. It was especially great to see the performers in their natural state, apart from the personalities they represented on screen, which was one of the reasons why these appearances were so delightful. Regardless of whether it was a vibrant conversation on Ellen or a hilarious appearance on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, it is essential to bear in mind that the purpose of their attendance was to spread the word about the Big Bang Theory. Number 7. All actors were expected to promote the show on social media. You probably use social media platforms like Instagram or Facebook to exhibit your work. Regardless of whether you are the proprietor of your own company, or a social media influencer that is making waves in the industry. The cast of The Big Bang Theory utilized their presence on social media in a similar manner in order to generate excitement for upcoming episodes of the show. If we compare these performers to the typical user, we can see that their followings have skyrocketed into the millions. Every single post resulted in a substantial amount of audience engagement. On the other hand, it is important to point out that maintaining a presence on social media was unrequired. For those who made the decision not to, there are other channels that promote the show. Number 6. Melissa and Maim made less than the rest of the cast. In the fourth season, Amy and Bernadette became part of the main cast, and beginning with the fifth season, they established themselves as regulars in the show. It was because of this that they were not initially considered to be as important as the original cast, and as a result, their initial payments were a very low amount of $175,000 per episode. Only 10% of what the top three got for the same amount of screen time is represented by that. Maim and Melissa were able to secure a more reasonable $500,000 per episode as a result of the talks that took place which resulted in the best five individuals jointly agreeing to cut their wages. 
In spite of this, it was still 50% of the earnings of the original five. In any case, who could possibly be dissatisfied with such big figures? It was a bit of a muddle when it came to the original cast of the show. Number 5. Kevin Sussman only got credited when he was in an episode. Even though you might not have noticed it, Stewart has been a member of the main cast even since the sixth season even began. Just one season after Amy and Bernadette made their debut, he was promoted. On the other hand, you very certainly have seen that Stewart was not considered to be an essential part of the primary group. Only in the instances in which Kevin Sussman appeared was he given credit. If you had paid close attention to the opening credits of each new episode, you would have noticed that Kevin's name was noticeably removed from the credits whenever he was not featured in that particular episode being discussed. In spite of this, Kevin was formally credited as a member of the ensemble throughout the larger cast billing. The cast of the original cast was a bit of a mess. Number 4. The top three got more money up until the 10th season. There was a bit of a jumbled up cast of the original cast. For their astounding earnings in 2014, the cast of Big Bang Theory was the subject of a lot of attention from the media. In addition to receiving up to $1 million per episode, the leading three actors were elevated to the exclusive club. In spite of the fact that it could appear to be an excessive gesture to recompense someone for saying bazinga many times in a 20-minute program, the performers unquestionably attracted a considerable viewership, which was sufficient to warrant the substantial salary. Number 3. Actors who upgraded to main roles only appeared in limited episodes. Just in case you thought Kevin was having a difficult time, you would be wrong. The encounter that he had was not quite as difficult as the experiences that the other two upgraded actors came across. In the second season and the ninth season, respectively, Leslie Winkle and Emily, Raj's ex-girlfriend, were both prominent cast performances. Due to the fact that both actresses were only seen in a limited capacity, it is understandable that you would have overlooked this particular element. In a manner comparable to that of Kevin Sussman, these two actresses were only given credit when they appeared briefly on screen. Leslie and Emily were heavily featured even before their status was promoted to regulars, but once the upgrade took place, they essentially disappeared from the show. This is a peculiar aspect of the news. Both were taken out of consideration in the end. It is very exciting to learn about the enigma that lies behind this occurrence. Number 2. Kaylee, Johnny, and Jim always got top billing. Kevin Sussman was the principal cast member for the first season, and he was also acknowledged as being a member of the ensemble. If one were to examine the principal storylines in greater detail, one would notice that the majority of them revolved around either Sheldon, Leonard, or Penny. The roles that Raj and Howard played were more ancillary, and they did not have their own principal narratives. The fact that Kaylee Cuoco, Jim Parsons, and Johnny Galecki were the three actors with the highest billing in the cast was the cause of this hierarchy. This trio was considered to be the most definitive primary characters, and they were pushed as such on a consistent basis. Furthermore, the DVD cover for the first season of the show included only the top three actors, with Howard and Raj being glaringly absent from the cover. These three individuals were continuously promoted to the highest billing positions in any and all cast lists for the show. Number 1. The cast had to engage in flash dances. The set of The Big Bang Theory has been home to a lovely tradition that has been growing stronger over the course of the past several years flash dancing. The live audience was treated to an exhilarating experience as a result of the spontaneous emergence of impromptu dance routines, as the name makes clear. Imagine that you are a member of that audience and that you have the good fortune to be exposed to this live performance. Infectious enthusiasm was not confined to a single fleeting moment during the entire event. I am so sorry. In order to guarantee that the audience received more than what they paid for, these flash dances lasted for a number of minutes. It seemed as though the performers had moved from being participants to being compelled contributors in these energetic dance moments, since this tradition had become firmly established. 
I hope you enjoyed learning about the crazy rules on the Big Bang Theory. It's always fascinating to uncover the behind-the-scenes secrets of our favorite shows. Be sure sure to subscribe and like this video for more thrilling videos like this.